everyone. Thanks for joining me today for I Spy a Dinosaur's Eye. Now when I was little, I used to love going through the hidden pictures in Highlights Magazine or checking out books like Where's Waldo or I Spy, seeing if I could solve the riddles and find everything in the picture puzzles. So I think it's really fun to have a book that not only challenges us to learn different words and to read, but is also really interactive and it's something that you can keep coming back to time after time. So if you liked this month's book, we do have other I Spy books in the early reader section. We also have a whole section just for um, puzzle books in our picture book collection. It's going to be under the activities section. And then there's also a section for books like maze books and riddle books at the end of the 700s and nonfiction. So if you are a puzzle fan like I am, I hope you'll stop into the library. Let us know at the kids desk because we would be more than happy to point you in the direction of any of those collections so that you can find some more fun and interactive books to bring home. So for today, we've got a couple of really fun projects to try. Now, if you picked up your program kit at the Indian Trails Library, you'll have most of what you need today, but you'll also want to make sure that you grab scissors, glue stick, pen or pencil and paper, and then something to decorate with. So I've got crayons today, but maybe you have markers or colored pencils, anything like that would work. And then we also need a special supply for our I Spy jar, the first project we're gonna to make today. So I have some paper grass that I'm gonna be using as filler for my jar. Um, kind of the less messy end of the spectrum would be something like plastic beads or buttons, um, or maybe even pom-poms. Kind of in the middle would be shredded paper like this, or dried rice or beans. And then the really messy end of the spectrum would be something like sand or glitter, which I only would recommend using if you're able to do this project outside. So double check with your grown up and see what you have available around the house to use this filler. Our jars are pretty small, so you're not gonna need a lot, um, but this is gonna help it transform it from just a plain old jar into an I Spy jar. So go ahead and get all of your supplies together. Make sure that you've got a nice, flat, even workspace that's clean and ready to go. And I will meet you back here for our first activity. All right, today we are gonna get started with the project that's probably going to be the most involved, take the most amount of time in our program today. And that is our I Spy jar. So this was kind of similar to the creations that you'll see in the I Spy books. Now this on the cover says Riddles by Jean Marzolo and Photographs by Walter Wick. So Walter Wick would actually lay out all of those different things that you would see in the photographs, take pictures, and then pass that on to Jean Marzolo who wrote the words for our book today. And if you look at some of the I Spy books that we have in our picture book collection, you can see that there's actually um, rhymes and a little bit more of a, a tricky riddle that you actually have to solve to figure out what you're looking for in the picture. Um, and I will include a link in the YouTube description below uh, to a video where you get to see Walter Wick working in his workshop, which I thought was really interesting to kind of see the behind the scenes, how they put these really awesome books together. So we are going to kind of modify that a little bit. And instead of taking a photograph, we are going to put a whole bunch of really cool things into our I Spy jar. And then it's going to be a challenge to see if you can find exactly what's inside. So I'm going to scooch this out of the way. I have my jar and then all of the small items that came together in the little brown paper bag in your kit. I have my filler. And then I also have a piece of paper and a pencil. So what I'm going to suggest for this project is, as we add layers into our jar and you choose which objects are gonna go inside, that you make a list. And then when you play with your jar later, you'll know what you're looking for, but you can also pass it off to maybe a family member or a friend and challenge them to take a look and see if they can find everything that's inside. 
Your list can be very simple. You could just write down everything that you put inside, or you could do something a little bit more like we saw in our book, and you can actually draw a picture so that the person who's searching will have a little bit of a hint as to exactly what they're looking for in the I Spy jar. All right, so we've got all of our supplies ready. How are we going to put this together? That's a good question. We are going to build up some layers. So our goal is to add filler into the jar so that as you move the jar around and look at it from different angles, you'll be able to see different objects inside. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my paper grass here and I'm gonna put that into the bottom of my jar to start with. Now, the objects that I included in your kit are ones that I thought would work well in the jar because they either have a distinctive shape like the dinosaur or because they have a color that's eye-catching, like the button or the little mini clothespin. So something that you'll be able to easily identify in the jar. Now, this is your project, so it's kind of up to you if you want to add everything that was included in your kit. Some of the things that were included in your kit, or maybe none of the things. If you do want to add a few things from home, that is totally fine. I would just suggest that you make sure that they're going to be small enough to fit in the jar. So nothing that's going to be, you know, taking up a lot of space in there. And you also want to make sure that it's something that's going to be eye-catching and easy for people to identify so that they can, you know, solve the puzzle and figure out what's inside the jar. And it's also something that you're done with. So I would not suggest putting in like a favorite toy or a piece of a puzzle or board game, something that you're going to want to get to later on um, because it's going to be inside your jar. So that's going to be really hard to get to. So make sure that it's something that, you know, maybe it's an odd or an end, something that you just happen to find under your bed or something that you know nobody is going to miss. You might want to double check with your grown-up before you make any decisions about that. So I'm going to start out with a couple of my bigger things. I'm going to put in my marble, my dinosaur, and then my Scrabble tile. So I have the letter X here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark that down on my paper. So dinosaur, marble, and then X. Okay, so I've got that on my list, so I know what's in there right now. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. So I'm going to put a little bit more of my paper grass inside. All right, and then I'm going to add a few more things. So next I'm going to do the pom-pom, the eraser, and the button. So I'll add those three things to my list. Pom-pom, eraser, and button. And then I'm just going to keep going, adding more layers of my paper grass and the other items from my kit. Now, what do you do if you want to add something to your I Spy jar and you don't know how to spell the word to add it to your list? Ask a family member or a friend for some help. All right, so my last three things are the clothespin, the eye, because, you know, Dinosaur's eye, right? And then the jingle bell. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more of my paper grass on top. And this should be just about right. So you can see that the level my jar is filled to is kind of this lip. So there's still some extra space in here. So if I put the lid on my jar, and I shake it up. You can hear everything's moving around inside, right? And I can move it, and as I move the jar, the items inside are able to move. So every time I look at it, I'm seeing something a little bit different. So you want to make sure that there's enough things in the jar to make the puzzle a little bit tricky. But if you stuff a whole bunch of things in there so that nothing inside the jar can move, like if I put 
all of this in here and really packed it in, then when I try to move things around, it really doesn't work very well. So it's gonna make it much harder to see things because there's so much filler in the jar. So you wanna find that kind of happy, medium balance in between making a tricky jar and having a jar that nobody's gonna be able to solve because they can't move anything around in there. All right, so now the last step for this is going to be to put the lid on and then you have a choice to make at this point. So my jar has the paper grass as the filler. If some of that gets out of the jar, it's not going to be super messy. So I'm not particularly worried about the lid coming off of my jar. But if you chose to add something like dried rice or beans, something that's going to be really small and that could make a little bit of a mess if the lid came off, I am going to suggest having your grown-up put some tape around the lid of the jar so that as you're holding it and you're moving it around or maybe shaking it up so that somebody can try to solve the puzzle and see what's inside, that way your lid is going to be secure because it's going to have the tape around it and you don't have to worry about the lid coming off and making a mess. So that would be the final step if needed. And then you have your very own I spy jar. You can keep adding things to it if you find other things around the house that you want to put inside. Keep adding things to your list and then you can challenge yourself, your family members, and your friends to see if they can find everything that you put inside the jar. Now the last thing that I want to say is if you really, really enjoyed this project and you would want to create something else, another picture puzzle for somebody to solve, then I would say consider doing what Walter Wick did in our book. And instead of putting all of your small items inside of a jar, you can set out a piece of paper. So I would suggest using either white paper or black paper, because that's gonna give you really good contrast. And then you can arrange all of the items that you have on the paper, and then have your grown up help you take a picture. And then just like we did with our I Spy jar, you can write a list of everything that's included in the picture, and then you can make your very own I Spy games for other people to solve. So I hope that this was a lot of fun, a little creative, and not too tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side, and I'm gonna bring out my supplies so that we can move on to our next project. In honor of our book's title, I Spy a Dinosaur's Eye, our next project is going to be a terrific T-Rex. So for this one, we'll need the dinosaur cutout and the small plastic bag from your supply kit. I'm also gonna have my scissors on hand just in case, um, and you may wanna have either tape or a glue stick, again, just in case. So our Dinosaur template here is actually one big sticker. So if we peel off the sticker back here, this whole T-Rex shape is going to be sticky. If we open up our plastic bag, we have a few different supplies inside. So we have some squares of tissue paper, and there are some green squares, and some yellow squares. We have one dinosaur eye, and then we also have some smaller stickers. So we've got some three, yeah, three green circle stickers, and then we have four triangle stickers. So these are going to be for decoration. So I'm gonna kind of tuck that back into the paper off to the side here. And then the last thing from our plastic bag is a green string. So if you notice, at the very top of your dinosaur cutout, there's a really small hole that we can poke through. And this would be, there we go, where you could thread your string through at the end of our project, and then you would be able to hang your dinosaur um, you know, maybe in your room or on the refrigerator, if you'd like to. 
All right, so now that we have all of our supplies ready, how are we going to make our project? So we are going to use the green tissue paper to cover most of our dinosaur. Um, if you want to have a completely green T-Rex, that is totally fine. We do have the yellow that we can use as a little bit of an accent. So the example that I saw had the yellow kind of on the T-Rex's tummy. So that just gives a little bit of a contrast between the two colors. And then once we've added the tissue paper to cover our dinosaur, that's when we'll add our other stickers as decoration. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and pull the sticker back here. This is a pretty big piece, so if it doesn't all come off at once, that's okay. You can see mine started tearing. I'll just go back and get the other pieces of paper off. Oh. Oh, looks like he's wearing mittens, right? Okay, there we go. So put our sticker back off to the side here and now we have our T-Rex template. So we have a couple of different options with how we cover our template. If you would like to go for a smoother look you can just take one piece of tissue paper and lay it down and then almost overlap the other pieces as you cover the whole um, T-Rex body or you can take your tissue paper and kind of crumple it up and you can see I didn't really squish mine too much. I just gave it a little crumple and then you can add your tissue paper like that. Um, that's going to give it more of a textured kind of a 3D look. And then you can decide, since this is your project, how much of your dinosaur you want to cover with tissue paper. You can cover every single inch of your dinosaur, or you can be a little bit more artistic and maybe just add tissue paper for uh, you know a few different spots and leave some of the, um, the green background showing through. That's kind of up to you. All right, so we're gonna keep adding our tissue paper. I have to say that I was really excited when I found this project because I knew I wanted to do something dinosaur themed. I thought that this would be a really fun and easy project to do together. But I also liked it because it gets us moving our hands and our fingers, which is really important to do to keep our hands and our fingers strong so that we can write and use scissors, paint, make all different kinds of fun projects, right? All right, so we're gonna keep adding tissue paper to our template here. And this would be a good time to decide whether you just want to use green or you want to also use some yellow tissue paper as well. I think it's kind of interesting because, you know, dinosaurs lived such a very long time ago. We know some things about them, but not everything. And one of the things that we don't really know is um, what dinosaurs look like, what color, you know, they would have been green and yellow, or maybe they would have been gray or brown or purple or orange. I mean, we, we don't really know that. So we have to use our imagination when it comes to um, how we draw or paint dinosaurs, how we show them in books or in movies. And it kind of makes you think that you know, people who live really far in the future, what will they imagine about us, right? All right, so I'm coming down here to my T-Rex's tummy. So I think I am gonna go ahead and start adding some yellow paper, just so that looks a little bit different. I'm gonna keep crumpling up the yellow tissue paper. I think I'm gonna to try to make it kind of a, like a, um, an oval shape. 
with my yellow tissue paper. So I'm doing the outside of that space first, and then I'm gonna come back in now that I kind of, I marked off where I want that yellow tissue paper to go. So now I know that I can go back in and fill in to the, um, the edge with my yellow tissue paper. All right, so I think I need maybe two or three more pieces of yellow here. All right, I think I'm happy with that. So now I just have to add my legs and tail. So I'm gonna keep going with our green tissue paper to make sure that I cover the rest of the sticker. I feel like I should have some, some dinosaur jokes or riddles to tell. I don't know any off the top of my head. But I could tell you where to find them at the library. So if you would like to look some up in our nonfiction section, I could help you find them. All right, we've got just a couple more pieces to add here. And then once we finish, we're going to go back in with those um, stickers that we set off to the side and we're going to add a little bit more decoration to our dinosaur. Well since we used the tissue paper on our project um, it's probably not going to work to go back and decorate with crayons or colored pencils. Um, if you have marker and you want to try to use it that might be successful but I would suggest um, just going with the stickers that we have in our kit because um, that's going to be a lot easier. Um, you might be able to glue or tape something on top of your, um, your T-Rex if there was some other detail that you wanted to add. You can get creative, it's your project. Um, but just keep in mind that tissue paper is going to be a little bit harder um, to write or draw on than a regular piece of paper would. All right, so I'm going to do two, three little pieces here. Tail. There we go. All right. So there is my T-Rex looking fancy. So the next thing that I'm going to add is my dinosaur eye. So this does have a sticker back on it. Um, if you have a little bit of trouble peeling that away, then you might want to ask grown up for some help. Once we peel that sticker back away, then we can go ahead and stick it down. Let's see, I need my dinosaur. All right, so I'm putting my eye towards the top of my dinosaur's head because I wanna make sure that I have some space to add the stickers for their teeth. All right, so that's gonna be these four smaller triangle stickers. We can peel the back off of them, and I think it's gonna come off in, yep, just one piece, but there's actually four smaller stickers here. So if I start to pull them apart, you can see I've got one, two, three, four triangles to be my dinosaur's teeth. So I'm going to match up one of the flat edges of the triangle with my dinosaur's mouth. So you can see how that's partly on my T-Rex uh, template and partly sticking down. If you want your teeth to go a different way, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I kind of like the three. I don't know, should I add one more? I think that works. All right, so we've got an eye, some teeth, and then the last thing that came in our kit are three green circle stickers. So this would be something that you could add as decoration if you want to, and if you don't want to, that's okay too. So I'm gonna punch out these three circles from the um, larger foam rectangle, 
and then I'm going to add them kind of down my dinosaur's back. So I'm going to do one, two, and then three. All right, so I think that my dinosaur looks pretty cute. So my last step is going to be to thread this green string through that very small hole at the top of the dinosaur template. So I'm going to push it through, pull it through the other side, and then I'm going to take my two ends and make a knot at the top. And then this will allow you to hang up your terrific T-Rex if there's somewhere in your house that you want to display it. So there we go. I think that's pretty terrific, right? So finish up your awesome dinosaur project. We'll set that to the side and then we'll get ready for our last project today. The last thing we're going to make together today is a moving eye dinosaur. So for this, we'll need the two pieces of paper that came in your kit. And then you'll also want to have your scissors, your glue stick, and then whatever you have on hand to decorate. I've got my crayons, but you can use whatever you've got at home. So this is going to be the top page that everybody's going to see. So this would be the, um, the dinosaur's face that we would spend the most time decorating. This page is what's going to go underneath and by moving this page back and forth, it's gonna make it look like our dinosaur's eyes are moving. So the first step is a little bit tricky. You might be able to do this one on your own, but you might wanna ask for some help from a grown up or from an older sibling. We are going to cut out two circles here so that we can see our dinosaur's eyes on the paper behind. So I think that the easiest way to do this is to fold your paper so that it kind of divides that circle in half. And then you can use your scissors to cut into the paper. And that makes it a little bit easier to cut out your dinosaur's eye. All right, so down here. Okay, so that's one. And then I've got to do my second one over here as well. So again, I'm going to fold my paper so that circle's kind of cut in half and then I'll use my scissors to cut in and then start cutting around that circle. All right. circles cut out of our paper. We can set our scissors to the side. All right, so this would be the point where you can do some decorating on your dinosaur if you would like. Um, we want to decorate this top paper first. Um, so I think I'm going to make my dinosaur blue because that's my favorite color. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some color there. And then our next step is going to be to add some color and decoration to our second piece of paper to our eyes. So you can start thinking about what you want your dinosaur's eyes to look like. What color would their eyes be? Are they going to be just a round circle or are you going to add the darker spot in the middle, the pupil like our eyes have? Maybe another color. Okay. 
And then when we put that second piece of paper behind the first, we'll be able to make it look like our dinosaur is looking around. All right, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more color here. You are more than welcome to pause the video at this point in time if you want to do some more decorating, if you feel like you need some more time to add color to your dinosaur. I think I'm just going to stick with this blue around the edge here. There we go. All right. So when you're done decorating the top piece, then we're gonna start decorating the bottom. Now you can see I'm holding this paper horizontally so that it's in a long rectangle because this is how we're going to match up our two pieces of paper when we're done with our project. So, just in case it matters as you're adding color and decoration to your eyeballs, this shorter or smaller um, part here is going to be the bottom, and then this is going to be the top. So I'm going to make my dinosaur's eyes green, and I'm going to add the pupil in the middle. So that's going to be that black circle in the middle. And then I'm going to color in the rest of the circle to be green. So again, if you want to do more decorating or add more color, you're welcome to pause and take a little bit of extra time. Okay, I think I might actually add a little bit of blue as well. Most people's eyes are not just one color, right? Okay, so those are my dinosaur's eyes. Now, holding my paper this way, I'm going to fold it in half. So I want my top edge to fold backwards to meet my bottom edge here. So this is going to make the paper with my dinosaur eyes a little bit smaller so it's easier to move back and forth to create that cool effect that we want, right? So I took the top edge of my paper and I folded it back to meet the edge behind it. I give that a fold. All right, so that's all set. Put that to the side. I'm going to come back to my top paper here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this top edge and we are going to fold it behind so that we are folding our paper in half. So the top edge is gonna come back to meet the bottom edge here. We're gonna fold. All right, so now we have a top and a bottom. So I'm gonna open up my paper and then I am going to add some glue to the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a red line around the edges of my paper here. Okay, so you can see those are the three bottom edges of my paper, right? This where I'm making my X's, oops, there we go, is the only place that we want to put glue. So we want to make sure that the two sides stay open and then our glue is just going to come onto the bottom right here. So I'm going to get my glue stick out and then I'm going to add glue just on the bottom part here. It's going to make kind of like a little envelope. You can see I'm being pretty generous with my glue. All right. So now I'm going to fold my top edge back down to meet the bottom. All right. 
so you can see the bottom part of my paper is glued together, but those two sides are still open. So now what I'm gonna do is hold my hand inside my paper so that it's kind of holding the top and the bottom away from each other. It's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to take this paper and I'm just gonna slide the edge inside. All right, let's see if we can get our eyes to match up. All right, so you can see I just put my paper in here. Do you see any eyeballs? No. So that means that I need to cut a little bit of my paper away, or maybe I just need to put it in the other direction. Let's see, does that work better? Ooh, almost. Okay, so my paper just needs to be a little bit smaller so that it lines up right. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut about an inch off the bottom. lines up a little bit better. Here, slide the edge of my paper in. There we go, we can make that work. All right, so if I hold my paper here, you can see my dinosaur's eyes, and then I can start to move them all around. And it looks like my dinosaur is making all kinds of different expressions and looking off in all kinds of different directions. So if you want to keep going with this, um, you can use the same um, basic template to make your own drawing. So you can see we've got the face kind of at the bottom of a half sheet of paper. And then we have a smaller rectangle sheet that comes behind it. So you could draw a picture of another dinosaur, another animal that you like, a person, could even be you. And then if you can match up the part that you cut out with your eyes, you can make your own project. All right, so I hope that you have a lot of fun playing with that one, maybe giving it a little bit of extra decoration and making your dinosaur extra special. All right, my friends, the last thing included in your kit is your very own dinosaur toy. Um, so this is something that hopefully would be fun to play with. Um, if you're looking for another project to try, you can always put some paint or um, if you have like a stamp pad, put some ink on your dinosaur's feet, and then press it onto a piece of paper and make some dinosaur track artwork. I don't know, if you think of something else clever, let me know. Um, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have about the projects that we did today, um, or again, to get some feedback or see photos of the awesome way that you interpreted our projects. Um, the Kids Zone email address that sent you the reminders for this program would be the best way to get in touch. Um, so I look forward to hearing from you. And then I just want to give one quick reminder that our last two K-1 book parties are going to be coming up in April and May. So that's going to take us to the end of the school year. Um, registration for those is going to open on March 15th. So keep an eye out for the next newsletter for the March calendar. Um, that will have that information about those two upcoming programs. We're going to take a little bit of a pause in June, July, and August um, because that's summer library adventure. So we hope that you'll come and join us for that. We'll have some special programs throughout the summer. And then we will come back for more awesome book parties in September once the new school year has started. So again, any questions, please let me know. If you have any feedback, I would love to hear it. And I hope to see you back here next month for another fantastic book and some more really fun projects. So take care, everybody. Stay warm. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.